What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today we are at the Evergreen Cemetery to talk about the very serious allegations of a former cemetery worker who worked at this very location where I'm currently at. This is a story about accusations of this cemetery stacking bodies in caskets, stacking bodies in body bags, crushing bodies, trying to fit as many bodies as they could into graves. And there's also some unscrupulous practices that are occurring in this very cemetery, probably right now as I'm speaking. And we're gonna get right into it. Evergreen Cemetery sits on 115 acres here in Hillside. Now, even though their address is Hillside, the cemetery actually sits on three different cities land, Elizabeth, Hillside, and Newark. Uh, it was established in 1853. The website says, uh, talks about, you know, notable historic figures, a lot of them Civil War generals that are buried here, describes this place as a uh, cemetery with lush landscapes, a very scenic and quiet place, uh, where you can bring your loved ones to be given a uh, very uh, dignified and respectful farewell. But within the last seven or eight years, this cemetery has also been uh, given a lot of other names. Uh, they have been talked about a lot of insidious acts that were committed by the workers of this cemetery. We're going to talk about those very actions. We're going to go back to 2007. So this place once had a man that worked here as a landscaper, general labor person named James Malloy. Now he worked with about seven or eight other uh, workers here at the cemetery, uh, keeping everything together, keeping everything maintained. And at that time, a man who was uh, held a supervisory role by the name of Kenneth Wallace uh, was basically running the show, making everything run as smoothly as possible. So in 2015, Mr. Malloy drops a headstone on his foot and is severely injured. So he sits out on medical leave for some time for his foot to heal before he's able to come back to work. When he comes back to work, uh, Mr. Kenneth Wallace says, we don't want you back. And, you know, James says, okay, fine. So James contacts uh, the proper authorities in New Jersey and starts telling them a very, some would say horrifying experience that he went through working here for the better part of seven years. So, he said in this section of the cemetery, which I cannot find because they're about to close the gates on me and I've been walking here for about the last hour looking for this. There is a section of the cemetery that is reserved for, I guess you can say, uh, indigent people, people that cannot afford uh, to have a proper funeral. Oftentimes funeral, excuse me, cemeteries, they will have a deal with the city where for X amount of dollars, uh, they will take care of people that pass, that don't have family members, people that don't have uh, any money for any kind of funerals. So he said that in the section of this cemetery, this place where they bury people that don't have anyone to claim their bodies, uh, they would basically bury the bodies five, six, and seven deep. And when they couldn't fit the bodies into the ground, he says that Mr. Wallace would often jump on a backhoe because I'm assuming nobody else wanted to do it and start crushing the bodies with the backhoe itself. Uh, he says oftentimes when this was done, it would be, you know, pine box coffins, regular coffins, and just sometimes they would just put a body in a body bag. That's it. And it would just crush a lot of times like body parts, limbs, legs, skulls uh, would come, uh, you know, exploding out of these coffins. And then they would just keep compacting it and compacting it until it just fit into the ground. And he had asked his supervisor, why do you keep doing that? And all Mr. Wallace would say is they got to fit. They got to fit. That's all he would say. So 
he was interviewed by a uh, local reporter in the area, and they asked him, well, if that was going on for the better part of seven years while you worked there, why didn't you say anything then? And he basically said, you know, listen, I don't have an education. I don't have any job skills. I can't just quit my job. Where am I going to go find another job? And that could be very well true. So past that allegation, you also have a one a woman named Wanda Warren who had came to visit her mother who had passed uh, in 2017. She comes out here in 2019 and she sees her mother's grave has no marker and it looks like the earth has been freshly dug up. She goes into the office and says, like, what's going on? Why is, was my mother's grave disturbed? They give her the runaround. Uh, you had another man who came into the office to complain that uh, his mother's cross was missing. Uh, you've had a woman, Paula Smith, who passed away and her family members had came for the funeral. Now, they didn't watch them lower the casket into the ground. They had the funeral and all the family members left. A few days later, they came by to see what the ground looked like. And in this picture they took, you could see that her coffin was lying next to a bunch of other coffins open and they couldn't see a body in there. And when they got close to it, they seen a bunch of rats coming out of the coffin. Now, when the family members, when word starts spreading around to different family members, and then they start telling their cousins, they start telling their moms and dads, and then everybody's showing up to the office here at Evergreen to get some answers. Uh, is my loved one in the grave? I mean, what's going on over here? And all the office told them was, contact a lawyer. Contact a lawyer. If you have a problem, contact a lawyer. So right now, there is a class action lawsuit uh, that has been filed uh, with a law uh, uh, attorney uh, office against the cemetery. Now, they filed this class action lawsuit last year. Now, as I was walking around the cemetery, I was getting side-eyed by the workers. So that's why you know, I felt a little bit uh, uneasy doing this story because I didn't want them to see me holding my camera and walking around because now they're going through a bunch of allegations of um, uh, misdeeds uh, at this very cemetery where I occurred. Now, I'm going to play devil's advocate and say this, I know a lot of people are not going to like what I have to say, but cemeteries are not in business to uh, not make money. Uh, that's not how it works. Uh, they're in the business to make money. That's how it works. People are employed by the cemetery. They, play, they pay people to work. And oftentimes, cemeteries, they'll have a deal with the city where, you know, they'll pay them X amount of dollars to bury a body or cremate it. And oftentimes, it's cheaper to bury a body that's to cremate it because your gas bill. So you got to think like a business. And I'm not saying that's okay what they did. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying it is what it is. It's just how it works. That's just how it works. When you're a big cemetery and you're making a lot of money, you're trying to cut costs, you're trying to cut corners. And again, I'm not excusing it at all. So please don't uh, misconstrue my words. But some very uncomfortable practices occur in a lot of cemeteries all the time and none of us are there to see it. Uh, very, very sad. And that's why, you know, I want to say this. Anybody out there to, here's a bit of advice, to spare your loved ones the, 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 the grief and, and, and just when, when something happens to you and they don't know what to do, it's always best to have some kind of life insurance policy Bare minimum, at least $10,000 will cover a funeral. And I think anybody and everybody out there uh, should really consider having at least bare minimum a $10,000 policy. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be that expensive if you could afford it. I know times are tough for a lot of people, but you have to have that policy in place so you could avoid all of the grief and the, and the anguish that your family is going to go through with not only having to, you know, deal with your death, but also they don't know what to do. They're scrambling, calling this person, calling that person. They don't know what cemetery to call. And then they're going to end up calling cemeteries like this. And I don't know, workers get lazy, workers get apathetic. And you see in one funeral, you practically seen them all. So I will keep you up to date on what's going on with that lawsuit. I expect it to be a long, uh, um, arduous process. And at the end of the day, you know, you, when you file a class action lawsuit and you, you involve multiple people, 
The only people that make money at the end of the day are the attorneys. So anyways, I've kind of shown you a little bit of the cemetery. I wish I can go in depth, but they're going to close the gates on me. I got to get out of here. I got to hit the road. You guys know how I roll. But um, you've seen the cemetery, what it looks like. It looks like a nice cemetery. It looks like they keep uh, uh, pretty well, pretty good maintenance of it. Not a whole lot of overturned graves. But um, I don't know. If you're in the uh, hillside Newark area, uh, before you, uh, you know, unfortunately when that time comes where you have a loved one die, uh, you might do, want to do a little bit of uh, due diligence in uh, researching a place, researching a cemetery, maybe going online and reading reviews before you choose a place uh, to let handle, uh, you know, everything in, uh, related to terms of uh, your dearly departed loved ones. Okay, guys. Lamont at large, I'm signing off. I'll catch up with y'all later. Have a good one, guys. Peace out.